more of your your ideas on this issue is also percolated because I think now suddenly there's a lot of lobbying for Foreign Relations Act, something more aggressive on this front. But thinking ko naman, Justice Garpy, that's also because marami na frustrate kasi for six years, the president, many people got away with spreading a lot of nonsense, right? So as in some sobrang nonsense. And speaking of nonsense, um, well, way more in your case than mine, but the angle of Vietnam, right? So a while ago, you mentioned China is the only country that is really creeping into our waters, right? Um, but of course, Technically speaking, Vietnam also has some overlapping claims with us in the Kalean Group of Islands or Spratlys. And yes, back in the what 70s, byan, um, na kinoy yung isang isla nung nag naglaro, nagising, ganay. Okay, we know that story, right? But this is so long ago, right? And last time I checked, hindi tayo binubuli ng Vietnam sa pag uh, sa pag-asa, sa ayungin, sa panatag. So, uh, Justice Garvey, can you? Right off the bat, go again. What is this nonsense attack about you and because of your personal connections uh, to uh, Vietnam, not necessarily the Vietnamese government? Um, can you just, speaking of pushing back again, facts, facts, facts first. Christian, okay, facts. <laughs> yes, go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei, Indonesia uh, have no claim on our exclusive economic zone. They agree with the arbitral award because the arbitral award does not touch on the territorial dispute. The territorial dispute concerns the high tide feature and 12 nautical miles. Beyond 12 nautical miles, that's the exclusive economic zone. And that's the ruling of the tribunal. The tribunal said beyond the 12 nautical miles of all these islands in the Spratlys is the exclusive economic zone of the Philippines. And all of them agree. They don't question that. So our dispute with them is on the territorial dispute. Only China questions our exclusive economic zone. China is claiming 80% of our exclusive economic zone in the West Philippines. So as far as the maritime dispute is concerned, we have only one adversary, China. On the territorial dispute, there are five disputant states. But that territorial dispute will go on and on because there is no tribunal, international tribunal that has compulsory jurisdiction over it. As far as the ASEAN countries are concerned, we have an, uh, an unwritten agreement that we will stand still, a standstill agreement. Uh, we do not occupy what the other has occupied already. And on top of that, you have the declaration of conduct that you do not occupy unoccupied features. So we... we the, with that, uh, we are comfortable with that. We even play basketball, volleyball with the Vietnamese. But our dispute with them is limited to the territorial dispute, which is just five less than 5% of the entire West Philippine Sea. So we don't have a dispute with China, with the, with the Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei, Indonesia, as far as our exclusive economic zone is concerned. And this is where the marine wealth is located. The gas, the oil, the fish, they're all in the exclusive economic zone. So that's why we can live with the territorial dispute. We can put it in a back burner until sea level rise will submerge all of these islands. And they become also our exclusive economic zone if within 200 nautical miles from our baseline. So let's just relax as far as the territorial dispute is concerned because there's really no tribunal that can acquire a compulsory jurisdiction. And nature is on our side. Sea level rise will be about one to two meters by the end of the century, and that will submerge all of these islands. So uh, what I'm saying is our dispute with the ASEAN countries, uh, our territorial dispute, is something that we can manage. Uh, we we have a standstill agreement. Uh, nobody will expand, nobody will occupy new features. But our problem is China, because every day we face them, they harass our all our vessels, fishing vessels or our Coast Guard. Uh, they harass or even our Navy in the BRP Sierra Madre. So that, that is really our problem. And the biggest problem is really to get the gas in Red Bank. That is the one thing that is very urgent because that will devastate our economy if we cannot get the uh, the gas in Reed Bank. Yeah. yeah. 
I think we'll have to return to the Red Bank again and again over the coming months and years uh, as we, we wait for the government's move. Uh, but just Scorpio, what do you think also about this growing cooperation between Philippines and Vietnam under Marcus Jr.? I mean, obviously, there's the angle of food security there because, what, 90% of our rice imports come from Vietnam. But we heard also words used like maritime cooperation agreement. Uh, are, is this closer to what you and I have been advocating for quite some time, which is maybe a kind of a COC among us, maybe a kind of maritime delimitation, boundary delimitation based on the arbitration award, not. And are you optimistic that's the direction we can move towards? Or or do you think that indeed the Marcus administration should aggressively pursue uh, you know, sensible bilateral maritime deals with, with Vietnam and from there also work it with Malaysia and all? I think... Ironically, I think I'm more comfortable dealing with Vietnam on this than Malaysia because ang gulo ng Malaysia eh, mas magulo pa sa atin eh. But but we can talk about that more. Uh, where yeah, do you when, that? Uh, on the mari- cooperation of maritime issues, uh, that refers to uh, the waters beyond the territorial sea, no? Because uh, uh, that's the maritime dispute. We don't have a dispute with Vietnam on our EEZ, waters beyond the territorial sea, and we can cooperate with them. How? Well, I'm thinking that uh, ASEAN countries, uh, Vietnam, Malaysia, the Philippines, even Indonesia, should be prepared to conduct joint patrols in their own exclusive economic zones. They can jointly patrol with us or we, in our EEZ in the West Philippine Sea. We will jointly patrol with them in the EEZ in, the, uh, in Vietnam, in, in Indonesia and Malaysia because, Richard, we cannot we cannot discount the possibility it's a remote possibility that the us might turn isolationist and just leave the south china sea yeah, and if, if if if, um, if the us will decide that uh, or can come to agreement with the with the with the with the chinese to divide the world they will withdraw from the south china sea if today they withdraw from the south china sea then the nine dash line, the ten dash line becomes the national boundary of China. No naval force will stop them, or can stop them. It's only the U.S. Navy and uh, uh, with the assistance of the uh, British and the French and the Japanese that's stopping China from establishing the ten dash line as its national boundary in the South China Sea. And they've included that already in their latest map. Before, they did not explain the meaning of, uh, they were ambiguous as to the meaning of the dashes. Now they say it's their international boundary. It's there in the legend of the map. So they have, they're telling us that's the national boundary of China. What if the U.S. will withdraw? What will happen to us? So we have to prepare for that day that we will be defending our own EEZ against China without the assistance of uh, European or North American powers, or even Japan or South Korea, so we we, we must prepare for that day, because uh, that's it's a distinct, it's a remote possibility. But you know, who knows if uh, there might be a different president of the U.S. who thinks that it's good to divide the world with China. And there's of course the possibility of you know a war in Taiwan, which will also directly have implications. Uh, for the South China Sea, because you know, there's no way China can dominate Taiwan without having some sort of dominance in the, you know, the rear area, which is the South China Sea. So I think that also compresses the uh, 